Hi everyone, in today's video I'll be showing you how you can make crepe paper garlands easily at home. I'll show you three different ways in which you can make them, also I'll tell you the benefits and the things that you should keep in mind while making them. I'll also compare the three and let you know the differences. So let's start. Now the first thing I do, I have here crepe paper. I'll take the crepe paper and I'll cut it to the size I want my garland to be, how broad I want it to be. So normal, a normal garland is about so broad. So I'll take an approximate three to four centimeters in width. Now we'll be using this for our garland today. The first method that we'll use is that we'll use glue in order to stick it together. I have taken a meter here, you can take more longer, shorter, how you want. I will double the scrap paper, you can see. It's double now. If you want, you can also make it with four, but I think double is good. Now I have two pieces of crepe paper, each piece is one meter size in length. So now what we'll do, we'll paste these two papers together. It's very important that you keep that you follow the middle of the line, at least at the half, and you stay there. Otherwise, the garland will not be equal. So we'll take the glue, and we'll glue it in the middle. What's very important for you to know is that, is that when crepe paper gets wet, even if, whether it's with glue or with anything else, it will stain. This scrap paper color will also stain on other things, so you have to be very careful of that. It's best that you take small pieces each time because then you know you'll be sure that you are doing it the right way. Now it's best you wait for this to dry. It will take, it depends on your glue. It will take about five minutes before it will completely dry. So in the meantime, let me show you the other two ways of making the garlands. Now again, I'll keep it the width for about four centimeters for this one again. and the length will be about one meter. Now for the second method, you'll be needing a needle and thread. You have to choose a color that matches your crepe paper. I don't have the same color at this moment, so I'll be using a color that matches it. I don't have any other color that matches it and suits it much more, so I took brown. After inserting the thread into the needle, you'll make sure that you make a knot on one side. You don't use the two sides on both sides, you just do it on one side. One side. You'll make a knot, you'll close it there. This will keep the thread secure on its place and your garland will not move or anything. 
Now for this method, I have the two pieces of prep paper. I'll place them on the, on top of each other. And I'll just simply stitch them together. It doesn't have to be big stitches of detailed stitch. It doesn't matter how. As long as you make sure that you are in the middle. You, are, you have to be in the middle. That's all. What's also important that when you will be doing this with shed, the crepe paper will move from its place. So it's very important that you keep it on an equal place. You'll move one time like this over the thread to make sure that there are no folds inside the crepe paper. This is the place where it ends, so we'll make a final stitch here. Tying a knot and securing it on its place. And then we'll cut off the trim. Now for our third method, I'll take another piece of crepe paper. I'll cut it at the same place. And again, I need one meter of this. Make sure that they are at the same length. This is one of the easiest methods but it's also a bit dangerous because it involves staples. So it's not so safe with small children around you. If you make it, it's best to keep it out of the range of the children. And here again, at half of the, of the width, you place this and you staple it. And you'll be doing this same thing at the, after a certain distance. You'll be just stapling it together. You don't have to take too much distance. I've taken like four fingers. About so much distance. It's just to secure the crep paper on its place. This is indeed one of the easiest methods, so if you are in a hurry, I think this is the less, least time-consuming method. And we have our last staple here. This is the stapled version. Now for this, it depends on how much you want, how deep you want the cuts to be. That depends fully on you, solely on you. I'll keep it for about like this. Like say if the width of this garland that you're going to make is about four centimeters, then I would say I'll take about one and a half centimeter to cut. And then I'll do one and a half centimeter cut on this side as well. And this garland will have one centimeter to hold and keep the thing on its place. And then you'll keep on making the cuts. They don't have to be exactly the same, but the better, the more uh, precise you do, the more beautiful the result will be. An easier way is that if you take the paper and you fold it together, this way it will be much easier and more, very less time consuming.
they'll just do the same, exactly the same thing on the other side as well. I have the shed wash in here, I'll do exactly the same, I'll fold the paper. And I'll make my cuts. I'll do exactly the same on the other side as well. In the meantime, the garland with our glue has also dried. So we'll do the same with this one as well. We'll just fold it. So it becomes a smaller piece which we can handle easier. Just a reminder once again that this one we made with glue and crepe paper when it gets wet it gets stickies then it stains so you have to be careful with your backgrounds and everything you have to be careful and your clothes that you don't stain your things because of these they need their time to dry it depends on the glue and the temperature of your room and everything it approximately takes five minutes and in some extreme cases it also takes 10 to 15 minutes to dry and in this one again we'll fold the paper so it becomes small and it's easier for us to handle and we make the cuts the same way we don't make them to the edge because this is wet and with wet it gets easier to tear so in this one it's important that we keep distance so if this is four centimeter in width then I would say take one centimeter here and one centimeter on the other corner and give this about two centimeters space so it stays in it intact and then we make our cuts exactly the same way we made it under other garlands so here I have the three garlands that I have made this one is the one with the staples this one is the one with the thread and this one is the one with the glue now I'll open them so we can compare and see the result of those So these are the three garlands that I've made. This is the one with the thread, this is the one with the glue, and this is the one with the staples. Now for the benefits, this one is the most stable one because it's on its place firm. All the staples are firm on their places, so this one will stay, this one will stay strong. This one is made out of glue. We do, we do have to handle it with care because it is wet. Of course, when we are making these garlands, we have to use them on a short term. We cannot wait for a month or so, or for a week, or for a day, we cannot wait. If you can wait for a day, then you can make these garlands beforehand. Otherwise, they are very delicate, you have to really handle these with care. This one is the one we made with shed. The one with that we made with shed is a bit unstable because of its structure this one is unstable the thread might move and it will change the shape of the garland a bit so my for me personally i like this one the most the one with the staples the first way of decoration i'm taking pin i'll put it here somewhere this is textile so i'll put it on this textile somewhere i'll secure it on a place
Now I'll show you the way in which you can hang these things. If you want, you can keep it like this straight. If you want, you can swirl them. I'll hang another and I'll show you what I mean. I have another garland here which I just made and I'll show you the swirl method. I'll do it at the same height. I have secured the yellow one here. So these are the three garlands that I've made. This is the one with the glue, this is the one with the staple, and this is the one with the chip. Now, about the different designs I was saying, you can make a swirl design in which you'll roll. You'll roll it like this. If you want, you can take it in any... At, the, at any direction, you can hang it. You can do anything with it like this. It depends on you how many swirls you want to give it. I've given it so many. If you want to give it more swirls, you can go ahead. If you want, you can give them some extra swirls. You can hang these. I have swirled this one not so many times, just a light swirl each time. You can say it's about two, three times or maybe four times. That's the highest that I've swirled this one. I have given this one as some extra spins. They have more swirls, but it also has a more catchy result. And this one is one I have left simple. If you want, you can keep it straight like this. And if you want, you can just once or twice fold it like this it's up to you how you want to do how light you want to keep your decoration or how heavy you want to keep your decoration for which occasion you are going to use it it all depends on your choice i hope you all did like this video if you did like this video then please give this video a thumbs up for other decoration party ideas backgrounds backdrops and all other kinds of decorations take a look at my channel and i'm sure you'll find something very nice in those videos bye